Hi YouTube, this is Colonel Panic, and you are watching a YouTube video. Elden Ring dropped in February, and it was kind of a big deal. Not gonna lie, kind of a big deal. I know personally, I'm still having a blast with it over five months later. And while I'm still on my first playthrough over 200 hours in, speedrunners have been beating this game harder than my dad beats me. And the time has been whittled down a few minutes at a time with each route change. At this point, the route has changed so much that in February, the route looked like this. <laughs> and the route just a month later looks something like this. I have truly never seen a game broken this quickly at such high levels. Speedrunners certainly have reached new levels of broken. Today I want to look at a runner I followed when I first started watching Elden Ring speedruns, Distortion 2. Now this feller started running Elden Ring seemingly as soon as the game came out, because I remember seeing his runs before I had even bought the game myself, and he held the record for a good chunk of time in the early months of the game. And he did not slow down for shit, D2 seemed to be going for gold, cause I swear for at least a week there I was waking up every morning expecting to see a new run from a stream the previous night. And every morning, like clockwork, there it was. Shit was becoming part of my morning routine. And each new run seemed to cut the previous run's time in half. And man, it was pure entertainment watching this massive game get beat in less time than it took to beat Oblivion. Now the current any% percent unrestricted route has surely changed since Distortion 2 has moved on from the category. But I really just want to use this video to emphasize how nuts this run was for the short month following the game's release. So slick your hair down, drink your gamer juice, because this is the evolution of Elden Ring any% percent from 49 minutes to under 7 minutes in less than a month. So let's get started with run number one at 49 minutes and 29 seconds. This run would be on March 9th, just 13 days after the game's release. The route Distortion 2 takes goes as follows. Choose the Weeaboo class for its high endurance level. That checks out. Run through the Chapel of Anticipation. Die. Run through the tutorial section. Get Roach from the Sight of Grace by Stormhill Gate. Skip Stormvale Castle by running along the secret path to its side. Hit up the warp gate, not as hard as Harry. Do an insane jump off a bridge and land on this rock thing. Don't die. Get the Hogwarts Crystal Key from behind a very shiny dragon. Get the Sight of Grace beside our good bud Ichi. We'll need this later. Fast travel back to the Grace on the bridge and enter the academy. Don't get caught lacking by the obstacle staircase. Quit out to skip this door opening animation. Run to this graveyard and get grabbed by a zombie bro with pretty eyes. Fall down here. Don't die. Get grabbed by Chainsaw Mommy. Die. Wake up in a volcano. Perform some insane back steps so the lava hurts less. Hey, hey that's, not how, that's not how the lava works. Run along rooftops like a samurai assassin because Ubisoft still haven't made that game yet. Pick up a rock. Avoid Kevin. Perform a glitch so well that it paralyzes this average casual gamer. Bully him a little because we all know speedrunners are the cool kids. Oh, too much bullying, he seemed to have died. Flee the crime scene to escape justice. Say what up to Eiji. Show him our rock collection. Level up. Get some cardio in back at the volcano. Run down a very spooky mountain. Fall three stories to activate an elevator. Wrong warp back to the elevator. Ride the elevator down and die, which warps us to the front of the dungeon. Ride our trotty boy all the way to a warp gate on top of a hill. Warp to Faramazula. Wrong warp to the front of Faramazula. Run through Faramazula, somehow surviving at level 24. Run past a very dramatic dragon. Keep running. Finally visit Round Table Hold. Buy all that good shit. Upgrade your weapon. Back to Faramazula. Fight the casual gamer from earlier. Oh snap, he brought a friend. Fight Big Doggo. Beat up a loser because he called you stupid. Do a bunch of running. Kill a literal god and a salamander for some reason. And beat the game. So that was a lot, and my mouth is officially dry. But that's because this run is basically a scavenger hunt to hit a bunch of triggers and collect stones in order to upgrade your weapons so you might not die to God's Gun Duo. 
This route perfectly shows what a speedrun looks like when a game just released. It's not perfect, no one has any of the tech down and muscle memory yet, and no two people are doing the run the exact same way, as you would see in later runs. Of course, now looking back at these early runs, it's easy to think, oh geez, over 40 minutes? That was fast back then? Damn. But keep in mind, the game just came out. Most people haven't even beat the game yet, and no one was an Elden Ring expert at the time, except for maybe Let Me Solo Her. And only a handful of glitches had been found at this time, but nothing crazy. And this route continued to get optimized down by Distortion 2 to close to 30 minutes, until one day, an elusive glitch hunter would find a glitch that literally changed the game. This glitch allowed players to move at staggering speeds in a chosen direction, when hitting a specific input at a specific frame in an idle animation. And it was up to runners to practice this notoriously hard glitch in order to compete. Other things have also changed, like what class you start with, and not having to worry about damage at all, thanks to a glitch we'll look at in a minute. So finally, let's take a look at this run just a month later, using mainly the zip glitch and other optimizations to make this run that used to take over 40 minutes, now take less than seven. Choose the Vanguard class this time. Do a quit out to skip the door animation, unlike the first run. Run outside and immediately do a zip all the way to the end of Stormville Castle. Wait, wait, hold up, what? Line up and do another zip to the Academy, where we will then do another zip, Christ, to the four Belfries. Here we will warp to Faramazula, the same way we did in the first run. Once we spawn in at Faramazula, then we will wrong warp to the start of Faramazula. Interestingly, D2 makes a remark here that he could maybe get a sub-7 run if he grinded hard enough, unaware that this run, in fact, would be sub-7. Anyway, I'm sure Distortion 2 will fight a boss soon, or pick up an item at least. No, wait, no, he's he's just doing another zip. Alright, here is the Meliketh boss fight. It'll be interesting to see how D2 pulls this off at level 1. God damn it. Okay, now this is the glitch I mentioned was discovered earlier. It's called a Mega Zip, and D2 will use it to get far outside the kill barrier below the map. Here he will fall for a couple seconds, and the beast clergyman will die. Me and the boss fight will enter stage 2 with Meliketh. You see, bosses in Elden Ring die if you're really far away from them, and no one is 100% sure why this is, but it's believed that when you get far enough away, the ground deloads that the boss is standing on, and falls into the kill barrier below the level. D2 just needs to do the same glitch again to kill the big edgy doggo. And now that Meliketh is dead, all we need to do to finish the game is to skip Godfrey, aka Horalu, by zipping over his head, meaning that his AI will not activate because we never go through the fog gate. And then all we have to do is zip away, which will kill Godfrey and enter us into stage two of the fight. But it just so happens that the Elden Beast, the final boss of the game, was also loaded in, and is still falling when we enter stage 2 with Godfrey. The timing matches up perfectly, meaning that by the time we let Godfrey kill us, the death screen fades to black, and we see God slain text over our screen to let us know it worked. Now when we load in, we're on the stone platform, and we just have to interact with this stone lady, and the game is finished. And to prove this run is harder than it looks, just listen to Distortion 2's reaction. It's gonna round down. It's sub 7, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? It's gonna round down, I'm pretty sure. It's gonna be 659. It's gonna be fucking 659. Oh, yes! Oh my god. And that's the story of how Elden Ring was broken in under a month, mostly because of the discovery of one massive glitch that made this massive world a little bit smaller if you can get the timing right. This has been Colonel Panic, thank you very much for watching, and thanks for all the support on my previous Halo video. It's gotten over a thousand views, which is a big deal for me. Really appreciate all the supportive comments too, and you guys just keep being awesome. Until next time, Colonel Panic signing out.